right, good afternoon. Just a housekeeping item. We're going to try to keep this aisle free. I am told the fire marshal is here. And uh, so uh, any extra people, if you could just go to um, the automatic chambers. Uh, but welcome here to Veterans Memorial Hall. And before we start, I just want to take a minute to get you vested in this moment. Sometimes these days we're physically at a location, but mentally we aren't all the way there. We aren't fully vested in what is happening right in front of us right then. In this moment right too, the magnitude of this moment has a lot of power. So it's not just enough to turn your cell phones to vibrate or silent. Just totally focus all of your energy and all of your mind in what's happening here today. As I mentioned, we are here in Veterans Memorial Hall. We need to focus on all the freedoms that we have because of our men and women who have served in the armed forces, one of which to freely choose our public servants. And indeed, for the, for the fourth time, we have chosen Mayor Neil O'Leary, a mayor who decided that he was going to stop talking and do something, a mayor who, as much as he likes the campaign, he loves to govern, and he was built to govern, he was built to solve problems. He doesn't care if it's a Republican idea, Democratic idea, independent idea. If it's a good idea for Waterbury, you better believe that Mayor O'Leary is going to do something with it. He sees opportunity in every challenge this city faces. And indeed, as Waterbury is the physical intersection of Route 8 and 84, the mayor knows that we are the intersection of faith, family, and hard work. And that's families of all different backgrounds. That's people of all different faiths. I am because we are, indeed, Waterbury is because we all are. The slogan is, what's more lasting than brass? Well, we know that. What's more lasting than brass is the will of the people here in Waterbury, our resilience, our commitment to one another, our dedication to helping each other to make Waterbury the best city it can be. And that's what we're here today to do to recognize those public servants getting sworn in who all have that commitment, that dedication. So yeah, I know there are a lot of things going on right now. We just had Thanksgiving, the holidays are here, it's snowing, there's football games happening. I'm aware of all, all the other stuff that's going on, but for the next 90 minutes, completely focus and give your energy to the swearing in today, because this, this moment, this moment has power. Now, if we could start with a national anthem, I'd like to call upon Holy Cross High School student Giovanna Oliver to lead us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Wow. 
Now, if you remain standing, I'd like to call upon the very Reverend James Sullivan, Rector of Basilica of the Immaculate Concep Conception Church. We place ourselves in the presence of our God. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed your glory to all nations. Assist with your spirit of counsel and fortitude, the Honorable Neil M. O'Leary, Mayor of Waterbury, that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people over whom he presides. May he execute the law with justice and mercy. May he seek to restrain crime, vice, and immorality through his policies. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct all city administrators and officials of the law, that your grace may shine on their work of leadership and service. May they seek to preserve peace, serve the cause of justice, and promote common happiness that all people may benefit from your gifts of liberty and equality. We pray, too, that our city in your mercy may become, as scripture says, a city set on a hill, a light shining in the darkness, a place of hope and unity for all who look upon her. May it be a place, place of peace where human dignity is held sacred and all families grow in holiness and prosperity through the values enshrined in the hearts and minds of its citizens and leaders. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father Sullivan. You may be seated. All right, this part's really cool. So it is uh, now my pleasure to call upon the daughter of the mayor, Maggie O'Leary, to administer the oath of office to her father, Mayor-elect Neil M. O'Leary. That was great. Congratulations, Mayor. This time I'd like to call on the Honorable Salvatore Agati, Superior Court Judge, to give the oath of office to Linda T. Whibby as Corporation Counsel. You, Attorney Linda Whibby, have been chosen as Corporation Counsel for the City of Waterbury. Do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, so long as you continue as citizen thereof that you are not subject to any of the disqualifications from holding said office enumerated in the charter of said city, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of your ability, so help you God. I will, and do, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations, Attorney Whibby. Now I call upon our Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill, to administer the oath of office to town clerk elect Antoinette Chick Spinelli. Do you, Antoinette Chick Spinelli, having been chosen town clerk of the city of Waterbury, do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Connecticut so long as you continue a citizen thereof, and that you are not subject to any of the disqualifications from holding said office enumerated in the Charter of the City of Waterbury, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of your skill and ability, so help you God. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Chick. Now I call upon Senator Richard Blumenthal to administer the oath of office to City Clerk elect Michael Dalton. 
First, let me uh, just say, Maggie, you did a great job. <laughs> and maybe one of these days, the roles will be reversed. What do you think? Maybe he'll be swearing in you. And congratulations to Kathy and your brother Patrick and all the family, and all the families of the office holders who are about to be sworn in. Uh, my congratulations and thanks for giving us, really, a model of community service and a model of bringing together our community. I work during the week in a place where there's a lot of division and discord. And I think what you're demonstrating today is that we can come together as a community in public service and do what's best, regardless of party, regardless of geography, and come together and really do what's right. So congratulations, Mayor. I know that's what you're going to be discussing a little bit later, uh, but I'm really proud to be here today to celebrate democracy and good government with you. And with that, uh, to Michael Dalton. You, Michael Dalton, having been chosen city clerk of the city of Waterbury, do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, so long as you continue a citizen thereof, that you are not subject to any disqualifications from holding said office enumerated in the charter of said city, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of your skill and ability, so help you God. Congratulations. Thank you for your public service. Congratulations, Mike. Now next, we were going to have Sheriff Stephen Conway, but he got called into duty by the DOT. So uh, as you drive safely home, you have our sheriff to thank. Uh, before I turn this over to Mike for the automatic meeting, I'd like to invite Congresswoman Johanna Hayes to say a few words. I'll say less than a few words because I've lived in Waterbury long enough to know what happens with Waterbury Hills and snow. So just congratulations to the mayor and all I would add is that when we leave this place today, please pray for your leaders. You know, we have people who are tasked with making really important decisions that affect the lives of so many people and it's so much bigger than any one of us and I could not be more proud or more grateful to have Mayor O'Leary at the head of the city. You know, his vision, his foresight, his ability to see things before they happen and pre prepare and plan accordingly has just been a blessing to the city, has been a blessing to me personally, and it's just an honor to serve alongside of you. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, now, at this point, I'd like to turn the microphone over to City Clerk Mike Dalton for the purpose of calling to order the Board of Aldermen meeting. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Kern. Recognizing there is a quorum, I hereby call the inaugural meeting of the Board of Aldermen of the City of Waterbury on December 1st, 2019 to order. And I will call upon an, members of the Waterbury Police Activity League if you would please rise, students, you now have the honor and privilege to lead the board on the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by God Bless America. Please proceed.
Thank you. If you could remain standing, I now will call upon the City of Waterbury's Police and Fire Chaplain, Father Ronald Ferrara, to open today's meeting in a prayer. Father Ferrara. Let us pray. All power from the never living God come upon us today as we gather to invoke your holy name. Watch over and bless the people of Waterbury as we swear in our newly effect, elected of officers. Bless our mayor, Neil O'Leary, and his administration, who will be serving for a fourth <coughs> term. And bless our board of aldermen, who represents the citizens of our great city and speak on their behalf. Bless the Board of Education who will set the policies and procedures to help teach our young people to grow in wisdom and knowledge. May they all faithfully serve the people of Waterbury and distinguish themselves as just leaders who will govern and guide us as well. Bless and guide us now as we honor you. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Father Ferrara. Uh, our city uh, sheriff, as Kenny Kern said, is uh, working, so I will now do a uh, roll call of our alderman elect. One moment. Alderman Bernelli. Alderwoman Mary Grace Cavallo. Alderwoman Brenda Cotto. Alderman Michael D.G. Vincarlo. Alderman Christian Dorso. Alderman Jetler Kula. Alderman Victor Lopez Jr. Alderman Vernon Matthews Jr. Alderwoman Sandra Martinez McCarthy. Here. Alderman George Newjame. Present. Alderman Michael Salvio. Present. Alderman Roger Sherman Jr. Here. Alderwoman Belinda Weaver. Here. Alderwoman Kelly Zimmerman. Present. Alderman, Alderman Paul Pernaruski Jr. Here. Fifteen present. Okay. Let me see here. I'll now call to give the oath of office to our Lieutenant Governor, Susan Beiswitz. Thank you so much for your leadership, Mr. Clerk. And Mayor O'Leary, let me just say on behalf of Governor Lamont and myself, how grateful we are for your collaboration and your leadership. You are such an energetic and enthusiastic leader. It is a pleasure to be here in the center of the universe to celebrate public service. Um, also, uh, I wanna give a shout out to my friend, uh, Chick Spinelli. You know her as uh, your town clerk in Waterbury. You should know she is also a leader amongst town clerks in the state of Connecticut and has served as the president of the Town Clerks Association, so you are uh, blessed to have such excellent leadership. And um, I am very honored to be here to participate in this celebration of public service that is made possible by a very special group of people 
who have served our country in the United States military so that we can have the freedom and the privilege to choose our leaders in elections. So I'd like to just ask our United States military veterans to please stand up so that we could say thank you to you for your service. Ladies and gentlemen. And there is also another special group of people that make possible this amazing group of elected officials uh, that you have representing the city of Waterbury, and that is the uh, selfless and supportive spouses and family members of all of our elected leaders who are very sacrificing, patient, encouraging and supportive. So could we have a round of applause for our family members and spouses? And I will just say that my husband does spousal counseling for elected officials in case anybody needs that. Um, and um, before I ask the Board of Aldermen uh, to stand to take their oaths. Um, take a look at the diversity that is Waterbury. It is truly reflected in the men and women who come from all walks of life. And even though they all come from different places, different backgrounds, they bring different talents and points of view, they have one thing in common, and that is the desire uh, and the willingness to serve and lead to make this place even better. And uh, the governor and I, who had the pleasure of appointing 50% of our cabinet members as very competent women and 40% of our cabinet are really highly competent uh, people of color, our team can't wait to work with your diverse team. And uh, thank you for sending them uh, to serve you. So uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please rise and uh, raise your right hand, if you would. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut as long as you continue as citizens thereof and that you, will, then that you are not subject to any of the disqualifications from holding said office enumerated in the charter of said city and that you will faithfully discharge according to law the duties of said office to the best of your skill and ability, so help you God. You. Congratulations. I would now entertain a, a motion from the board to elect a temporary president for the purpose of electing a permanent president of their honorable board. The clerk recognizes Alderman D. G. Ovin Carler for the purpose of a nomination. Mr. Clerk, Mr. Clerk, honorable members of this board, it is both an honor and a privilege to place into nomination the name of Alderwoman Sandra Martinez McCarthy as temporary president. We have a nomination of Alderwoman Sandra Martinez McCarthy as temporary president. Do I have a second? A second that nomination. I, we have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any nomination. other nominations? Nomination. Okay. Being there are no further nominations, may I have a motion to close nominations for the position of temporary president of the Board of Aldermen? So okay. Second. Second. Okay, all right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. We now have before the board one nomination for position of temporary president. May I have a motion to approve Alderman Sar Martinez McCarthy as temporary president? I have a second? So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 
Alderman Sandra Martinez McCarthy, please come forward and assume the role as temporary president of the Board of Aldermen. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just gonna take a couple of seconds to enjoy this. So just give me a second. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk, honorable members of the Board of Aldermen. The matter now before this motion is the election of a permanent president of the Board of Aldermen. The chair recognizes Alderman Brunelli for the purposes of nomination. Madam President, Honorable members of this board, it's both an honor and a privilege to place into nomination the name of Alderman Paul Penaruski as president. Okay, we have a nomination of Alderman Paul Penaruski as president. Do I have a second? Alderman Salvio? Second. second. Okay, we have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Being that there are no further nominations, may I have a motion to close nominations for the, for the position of president? I move to close nominations. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. The business before this board is the election of Paul Pernanuski as president of the Board of Aldermen. May I have a motion to approve Paul Pernanuski as president? Second. Second. Any discussions? I will entertain a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. President Peternuski, please come forward and assume the chair. Didn't she do a great job? And I want to tell her it's only a few seconds that you actually get to enjoy the job, so that's... <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's actually a great honor uh, to have the opportunity to serve for another two years as president of the Board of um, Aldermen, and I'd like to thank my colleagues on the board for their vote of confidence and for their friendship, and I look forward to the next two years working together to make uh, Waterbury a much better place that we, know it all can, that we all know it can be. Um, and at this point in the uh, program, I get to do something that only happens once every four years in the city of Waterbury. Somebody gets to tell the mayor where to go, and I get to do that this morning. So with this, the mayor is going to leave the hall, and we'll bring him back a little bit later for his speech. So. The matter now before this board is the election of a president pro tem of the Board of Aldermen, and the chair recognizes Alderman Weaver for the purpose of a nomination. Mr. President, honorable members of this board, it is both an honor and a privilege to place into nomination the name of Alderman Victor Lopez as president pro tem. We have a nomination of Alderman Lopez as president pro tem. Do I have a second? Alderman DGO Giovanni Carlo. I second the nomination. We have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Being that I hear no other nominations, may I have a motion to close nominations for the position of President Pro Tem? I move to close nominations. Second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries, nominations are closed. The business now before this board is the election of Alderman Lopez as President Pro Tem of the Board of Aldermen. May I have a motion to approve Alderman Lopez as President Pro Tem? So moved. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of Alderman Lopez as President Pro Tem, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Oppose, no. The motion carries. Congratulations, Alderman. You are now the President Pro Tem. The matter now before this board is the election of a majority leader of the Board of Aldermen, and the chair recognizes Alderman Dorso for the purpose of a nomination. Mr. President, honorable members of this board, it's an honor and privilege to nominate my friend Alderman Ernie Brunelli as majority leader of this board. 
We have a nomination of Alderman Brunelli as Majority Leader. Do I have a second? Alderwoman Cotto? I second nomination. We have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Hearing none, may I have a motion to close nominations for the position of Majority Leader? Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The nominations are closed and the business now before this board is the election of Alderman Brunelli as Majority Leader of the Board of Aldermen. May have a motion to approve Alderman Brunelli as Majority Leader. So motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I will entertain a voice vote. At this point, only the, only the Democratic Caucus, please. All those in favor of Alderman Brunelli as Majority Leader signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. Congratulations, Alderman Brunelli. You are now the Majority Leader. The business now before this, uh, before this board is the election of a Minority Leader of the Board of Aldermen, and the Chair would recognize Alderman Nujame for the purpose of a nomination. Mr. President, honorable members of this board, it is both an honor and a privilege to place into nomination the name of Alderman Roger Sherman as minority leader. We have a nomination of Alderman Sherman as minority, as minority leader. Do I have a second? Alderman Cavallo? I second that nomination. We have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Hearing none, may I have a motion to close nominations for the position of minority leader? I move to close nominations. Is there a second? Second. The motion having been made and seconded, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Op opposed, no. The nominations are closed. The business before this board now is the election of Alderman Roger Sherman as minority leader of the Board of Aldermen. May I have a motion to approve Alderman Sherman as minority leader? Is there a motion from the Republican Caucus? Motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion having been made and seconded, I will ask all those in favor from the Republican Caucus please vote aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries. Congratulations, Alderman Sherman. You're now the minority leader of the board. The matter now before this board is the adoption of the board's rules for the upcoming term, and the chair would recognize the majority leader for a motion to adopt. Mr. President, I move the adoption of the rules as presented. Thank you. For a second, Alderman Sherman. I second that. Thank you. The motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none then, all those in favor of approving the rules as presented, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries and the rules are adopted. The chair would now appoint the following alderman to inform Mayor Neil M. O'Leary that we're ready to receive him. Uh, the Majority Leader Bernelli, Minority Leader Sherman, and President Pro Tem Lopez. Would you, Alderman, kindly summon the mayor? We'll just take a few minutes to stand down while they go get him.
It is now my high honor and great privilege to introduce for the purpose of his inaugural address, my friend, the Honorable Neil M. O'Leary, Mayor of the City of Waterbury. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Come on, it's snowing out there. <laughs> Thank you. Plus, we're way ahead of schedule, so I get to talk longer. <laughs> Only kidding. Don't get nervous. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our beautiful city hall, to our police and fire chaplain, Father Ferraro, Father Sullivan, Pastor Reese, This is an awesome feeling, and I love that snow out there. Thank you all for joining us today. We're honored to have our United States Senator Richard Blumenthal and Congresswoman Johanna Hayes here with us, our Lieutenant Governor Susan Beiswitz, Secretary of State Denise Merrill, State Senator Joan Hartley, State Representatives Geraldo Reyes, and Joseph Paletta, the Honorable Salvatore C. Agati, as well as our re-elected town clerk, Chicky Spinelli, city clerk, Mike Dalton, city sheriff is out plowing snow. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh boy. And elected members of our Board of Aldermen and Board of Education. In addition to our Master of Ceremonies, who is also our Democratic Town Chairman, Ken Curran, we are also joined by our Republican Town Chairman, Bill DeMeda. I'd also like to thank three individuals on my team who worked incredibly hard this fall. My campaign manager, Andrew Bernaka, Adam Shabin, and Ron Napoli Sr. Last, but certainly not least, let's have another round of applause for Holy, High, Holy Cross High School student Giovanna Oliver and the PAL Choir. I'd like to start by acknowledging my deceased grandparents, John and Margaret O'Leary and Jeremiah and Elizabeth Murphy. Each immigrated here to Waterbury from Ireland in search of the American dream. Like most immigrants in the early 1900s, they were very poor, but had faith in God and determination. Each of my grandfathers worked in the brass mills, met my grandmothers, and started families. I want to thank my parents, who have also passed, my father, Neil, a career Waterbury firefighter, my mother, Margaret, better known as Peggy, a registered nurse, both at St. Mary's Hospital and the Visiting Nurse Association. My parents taught myself and my five siblings the value of faith, family, hard work, and loyalty. I want to acknowledge my wife, Kathy, herself a career teacher, our son Patrick and his wife Melissa, who were unable to make it here from Charlotte, and you all saw my daughter Maggie, who is now on her way back to school with the weather the way it is. Um, Maggie is a student, a freshman at the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester. I also want to recognize my three sisters, Christine, Nancy, and Noreen, their spouses, Gary, Greg, and Dennis, my two brothers, Kevin and Brian, as well as my six, my six incredible nieces and nephews. And I have the honor and privilege of having my dear fr summer friends from Sea Dock in Milford, which is where we keep our boat and hang out with these pretty wild people. <laughs> I need to acknowledge my office 
my chief of staff, I don't know what I'd do without him, Mac DeMac, Economic Development Director Joe McGraw, David, George, Sonia, Monroe, Judy, Ken, Mickey, Patty, Allie, and Desra. That's quite a lineup. Also, our Corporation Counsel, Linda Whibby, Director of Finance, Mike LeBlanc, our Budget Advisor, Sarah Geary, and all of our staff. I want to thank and congratulate all the elected officials and their families who recognize and understand that serving is a commitment that is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want to thank our Board of Aldermen President, Paul Pernaruski, who himself has been an alderman for 18 years and the past 10 as president. I also want to thank and congratulate Alderman Victor Lopez, Ernie Bernelli, and Roger Sherman for taking on leadership positions on the board. In addition, I want to recognize and thank our school superintendent, Dr. Verna Ruffin, our police chief, Fred Spagnolo, our fire chief, Terry Ballou, and all of these police officers and firefighters who work for every one of us tirelessly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. As most of you know, I'm now in my 40th continuous year of service to this great city. I have never, ever, once over those 40 years regretted one second of public service to this city. I have loved this city and all of its people since day one. I've been proud to have served this city as a police officer, holding every rank up to and including chief. I've served two years on the Board of Education in the past eight years as your mayor, which has been an honor of a lifetime. These past eight years as mayor have been the most challenging and yet the most rewarding. I am proud we have seen growth and successes in many of our public schools in this city. I commend Commissioner Liz Brown and Chief Academic Officer Darren Schwartz and many others who have made a difference in the areas surrounding the Office of Early Childhood. I am also proud that after a national search, we have found our new school superintendent, Dr. Verna Ruffin, who in 18 months has shown tremendous leadership and courage to move this district forward. I commend every member of our school board for their unwavering support of Dr. Ruffin. But as every urban school district leader in Connecticut knows, there is so much more work that needs to be done. The state of Connecticut still has the most significant achievement gap in this country. We must continue to fight for the resources through our federal and state delegation to support the almost 19,000 students in our public schools here in Waterbury and other, all the other urban students across the cities of Connecticut in Connecticut. I also want to acknowledge and thank Commissioner Karen Harvey for her leadership in working with Dr. Ruffin, CHRO, and my office to continue to find ways to attract and retain minority school teachers and administrators. I would ask Dr. Ruffin and incoming Board of Education President Chuck Pagano and every board member, teachers, administrators, and parents in the Waterbury School District to find creative ways to use our schools as community centers and as places to engage our parents to play a critical role in their child's education. We must find thoughtful ways to think out of the box to mentor and remind our parents that the key to a child's success is education. We must continue to work with every family to ensure that every child especially those with challenges, are given the resources to be successful. We must explore the after-school programs in reading, math, and STEM. 
We must also develop curriculum and programs for parents. That's right, parents who desire to improve their own educational opportunities for success. I believe we must find ways to offer educational opportunities to our parents, many of whom come from all over the world, and they themselves have been denied an opportunity for better education. I next want to touch on economic development. You guys are going to be really proud of me how short this speech is. <laughs> I worked on it all afternoon yesterday. I changed it like tw 10 times. I timed it 10 times and I kept chopping it up, especially after I heard the weather forecast. But I do want to touch on economic development, and this is as important part of the speech, I think, as any part. As we know, Waterbury saw amazing support from Governor Malloy and his administration during his eight years in office, and we should all be eternally grateful for that. I am very proud to say that over this past year, we have worked so closely with Governor Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz to keep that commitment and enthusiasm going. Both Governor Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz have visited Waterbury on numerous occasions since being sworn in on January 20th of this year, and we really have become very close and our ideology is very much alike. As most of you are aware, the governor has recently rolled out his latest version of the state transportation plan. I am urging all of you to follow it closely. In it, our plans to dramatically improve our transportation infrastructure throughout the state. We must recognize and understand that modernizing our transportation is a key component to moving this state forward and for economic development opportunities. We must act now, right now, if we want our children and grandchildren to have opportunities here. You have all seen the dramatic positive impacts of the 84 widening project that has had such a positive impact on this city. It has spurred grandless growth, which brings stabilization to our taxpayers, good paying job opportunities, unprecedented manufacturing growth on the east side of the city, which has led to a 10 point drop in the city's unemployment rate over the past eight years. This new plan is an absolute game changer for our city and our residents. It will dramatically improve the rail line between here and Bridgeport and ultimately Fairfield County to Manhattan. There's over a thousand people every day that leave Waterbury and travel down to lower Fairfield County and into New York City every day. Our residents who have moved to Waterbury because of the close proximity to New York and because of the rail line that is, we promised to improve and because of the great neighborhoods here, the great schools here, and the low crime. This plan is also critical for tax stabilization and growth in every valley town. That's right, Naugatuck Valley, from here to Bridgeport. This plan will support at least immediately four times the number of rail commuter commuters than we have today with ample opportunity to expand. We as residents of our great state and city must recognize that we are falling behind our neighboring states. Residential and commercial real estate in Waterbury has seen steady increases in value over the last two years because now you can actually drive through Waterbury. There are many new job opportunities. Our homes and apartments are affordable. Our neighborhoods are safe. This Transportation plan is critical to the continuing success forward and forward movement and economic growth for the city of Waterbury. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by the naysayers. You as hardworking middle class residents of this city are smarter than that. We have seen the hard times in this city and together, together, we have fought our way back. Do not let them foil our opportunity for a better and more competitive city and state. We must be courageous 
and we must be heard. I also want to take a moment to thank the members of the White Collar Union, the Blue Collar Union, the Fire Union, the Police Union, the Managers Union, and the supervisors, nursing supervisors, for agreeing to one-year wage freezes during their respective contract negotiations. These employees are committed to their city, and their sacrifice has enabled this city to hold the line on property taxes over the past several years, and they deserve a lot of credit. Lastly, I want to thank the voters of Waterbury for showing overwhelming confidence in the leadership of this administration that has brought us to where we are over the last eight years. November 5th was our fourth election, and I am humbled and thankful for the overwhelming pluralities in each of those victories. Together, we have accomplished so much over the past eight years. We have avoided the partisan bickering that has plagued our federal and state government in recent years. I will close by offering this quote by President John F. Kennedy, which appears on a plaque in my office and is in your program today. And I'll quote, let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. Pretty short, right? <laughs> Thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this point, I would entertain a motion to incorporate the inaugural address into the minutes of the meeting. Alderman Brunelli. Alderman Sherman. Second. Having been moved and seconded, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. So moved and so ordered. Before we close out this Board of Aldermen organizational meeting, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our town committee chair, Mr. Ken Curran, for being our master of ceremonies. He did a terrific job tonight, so thank you. And I would remind you that right after we adjourn this alderman's meeting, the Board of Education is going to have their uh, organizational meeting. So if you could all just please stay in your seats, um, and we'll get through that. But at this point, I would like to ask Reverend Christopher Reeve, the, Reese, the pastor of Grace Baptist Church, to come up for the closing benediction. On behalf of the faith-based community here in Waterbury, we want to congratulate you, Mayor O'Leary, for your outstanding leadership of this city. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard. And now, Lord, we ask blessings upon this administration. We ask, God, that our mayor and those who work with him, that they go in your peace, that, God, despite what the world may say, we pray, God, that he will always seek your face in all that he does. We pray for the Board of Aldermen. We pray for the Board of Education as they continue to provide, God, policies and procedures that impact our children and the residents here at this uh, city. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now and forevermore, as we all say, amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. With that, is there any other business to come before this board? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion having been made and seconded, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay, 
Next is the Board of Education. I hereby call the Board of Education inaugural meeting of December 1st, 2019 to order. At this time, I call upon City Clerk Mike Dalton to administer the oath of office to the Board of Education elect Elizabeth C. Brown, Rocco F. Orso, Charles E. Pagano, and Ann M. Sweeney, as well as Jason Van Stone. Mr. Dalton. Thank you, Mayor. Your right hand, please. You, having been chosen Board of Education Commissioners of the City of Waterbury, do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut so long as you continue a citizen thereof, that you are not subject to any of disqualifications from holding said office enumerated in the Charter of the City, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the best of your skill and ability, so help you God. Congratulations. I got, I got, I got it next. Okay, good. Yeah, I think yeah. no, you got it. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Harvey? Here. Commissioner Hernandez? Here. Commissioner Orso? Here. Commissioner Pagano? Here. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Commissioner Stango? Here. Commissioner Sweeney? Here. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Here. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? And I entertain a motion from the board elect of the temporary president for the purpose of electing a permanent president of the honorable board. The clerk recognizes Commissioner Sweeney for the purpose of a nomination. Honorable Mayor and members of this board, it is my privilege to place into nomination the name of Chris Commissioner Charles Stango as temporary president. We have a nomination of Commissioner Stango as temporary president. Do I have a second? I second that. We have a nomination and a second. Is there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Being that there are no further nominations, may I have a motion to close nominations for the position of temporary president of the board? I move to close the nomination. Have a, a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. We now have before the board one nomination for the position of temporary president. May I have a motion to approve Commissioner Stango as temporary president? Move to approve. Second. Aye. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Commissioner Stango, please come forward and assume the role as temporary president of the board. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of the Board of Education. The matter now before this board is the election of a permanent president of the Board of Education. The chair recognizes Commissioner Harvey for the purpose of a nomination. Thank you, Mr. President, honorable members of the Board of Education. It is indeed an honor, both an honor and a privilege, to place into nomination the name of Commissioner Charles Pagano as president of the Waterbury Board of Education. We have the nomination of Commissioner Pagano as president. Do I have a second? Commissioner Hernandez. I second the nomination. We have a nomination and we have a second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Nominations are closed. The business before this board now is the election of Charles E. Pagano as president of the Board of Education. We will now have a roll call. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Harvey? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Stango? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Commissioner Tom Van Stone. 
Motion carries. President Pagano, please come forward and assume the chair. Thank you, everyone, especially my colleagues on the Board of Education. I uh, thank you for your support, your trust, and I will be there for you going down the path forward. I just want you to know my definition of leadership is helping others do better. The kids and then the rest of my team. So thank you very much. The matter now before the board is the election of a vice president. The chair recognizes Commissioner Brown for the purpose of that nomination. Mr. President, honorable members of the Board of Education, it is both an honor and a privilege to place a nomination, my friend and colleague, the name of Commissioner Karen Harvey as Vice President. Do we have a second? Second. We have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? May I have a motion to close the nominations for Vice President? I move to close the nominations. Do we have a second? I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. We will now have a roll call vote for the election of Commissioner Karen Harvey as Vice President. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Harvey? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Stango? No. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Vase Jason Van Stone? Yes. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? Yes. President Pagano? Yes. 8-1 motion carries. Thank you. And congratulations to Ms. Harvey. The matter now before this board is the election of a secretary. The chair recognizes Commissioner Juanita Hernandez for the purpose of that nomination. Mr. President, honorable members of the Board of Education, it is both an honor and a privilege to place into nomination the name of Commissioner Ann Sweeney as secretary. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a nomination and a second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? May I have a motion to close the nominations for secretary? I move to close the nominations. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nominations are closed. We'll now have a roll call vote for the election of Commissioner Ann Sweeney as secretary of this Board of Education. Commissioner Madam Clerk. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Stango? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Yes. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? Yes. President Pagano? Yes. Congratulations, Secretary Sweeney. <laughs> the business before this board is now the adoption of the bylaws. To adopt the bylaws of the Board of Education as presented. Do we have, thank you. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now adjourned. Thank you. I like our new Board of Education President's meeting style. Very efficient. And indeed, uh, I'd like to thank everybody again for making the choice uh, to be here participating with us today in what is a historic day uh, for Waterbury. And there's one more choice as we go forward I'd ask you to make, and that's in every conversation you have, every social media post, everything that you do, choose mutual understanding over mutual destruction. 
uh, it seems these days we are too quick to look what we have that divides us in here for us to have a vibrant city, we really need to focus on what we all have in common, and the mayor sets a great example by doing that, and I ask you all to join him in doing that as well. Uh, if you could stay, remain seated until the mayor and administration has left, uh, and then there also is a four o'clock uh, mass at the Immaculate, all are invited. Thank you again. Stop it for a little bit. No, but it's not right there. No.